Oh, ho, ho, you know, that Battle of Alberta rivalry is absolutely something special, but there is something so pure, so clean, so chaotic to the rivalry between the Oilers and Leafs fans on the internet. This is Dolany TV, ladies and gentlemen, good evening, and welcome to just a fun way to cap off what's been an exciting week in Edmonton Oilers land. Of course, today, obviously, you got to watch the fallout of the Leafs versus Flames game last night, in which, like I said on the live stream on Gillies TV, you should go find him and subscribe to him if you haven't already. Um, big thing is, we needed that one to be a high-scoring win for the Leafs, Flames lose on a Saturday night. Unfortunately, they get a point in OT, but the Leafs win 5-4. It's a big, fantastic game, and away we go with a big old victory for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Problem is, in of that, the Leafs get to gloat about their big four, right? Marner, Tavares, uh, Nylander, and Matthews, I think, is the big four that is mentioned right here in this situation for the... Uh, Sportsnet stats article, which then comes out with uh, Tim and friends coming up here saying, is there a better group of four forwards in the NHL right now? If so, who? And this absolutely sparked off an absolutely incredible mess on Twitter this afternoon. And I'm just literally trying to cash in and have a little bit of fun, poke the bear a little bit and see what happens. But folks, if you're new to the channel, we regularly do Oilers news. Uh, we'll have World Juniors coverage coming up here and a lot more throughout the rest of the year as we go towards the NHL playoffs. So if you're new, consider hitting that subscribe button here on the channel. And I'd be very, very humbled to have you along here as we try to hit 10,000 subscribers. So flash talk graphic again one more time here. Maple Leafs big four during 14 game point streak. Obviously the Leafs have had points in 14 straight games. They've been on quite a tear. They're up in the top three of the... Uh, Eastern Conference at current, and well, you know what, they uh, they looked decent last night against the Flames, obviously they needed to to win, and that's what they did, but then, after that whole mess right there, the Oilers clapped back, and this is kind of the thing, right before the Oilers got in on this, and I mean that Tim and Sid, uh, or Tim and Friends, sorry, article, uh, post was posted at 8.29, it raged all night into the morning, I noticed it about noon today, and then the Oilers come out at 2.30 today, with this, I had just woken up from a nap, and the Oilers dropped this on everybody. Uh, sorry to say, but uh, McDavid, Drysdale, Hyman, and Nugent Hopkins have 31 more points this season. And oh, don't forget the salary implications in which I believe we are paying our four guys $9 million less than the Leafs are paying their four guys. So here's the thing of which is the beauty for Edmonton Oilers and Leafs fans, is we have four core guys to each team right now showing up doing the job and to debate who's better and worse that that's an ebb and flow over time obviously the advantage throughout the season I think has heavily still been in favor of the McDavid led quartet but as it sets for this season I think it's one of those things where both teams have high expectations the Leafs would just like to make it over the first round the Oilers would like to make it back to the Stanley Cup dance and that's where it's one of those things right is um, you're gonna get a lot more of this as the season goes along and the reason why I'm jumping in on this right now is this isn't targeting a player who is loved by some fans hated by some fans like it is with yes Pugliarvi all the time this is targeting more or less two fan bases against each other as they try to um, navigate their season. And this is really the first instance in which Oilers Twitter and Leafs Twitter and the internet in general has gotten up in arms about the Leafs versus the Oilers this season. Obviously, yes, you can talk about the goaltending, but I think that's more Oilers fans crying about what the Leafs have compared to what we have in Jack Campbell. And again, that's one of those things, let it play over, over the course of the season, because again, Matt Murray just allowed four goals, and the Leafs had to win in overtime because of it, but it's one of those things that'll play out as the season goes along. But this was an exciting kind of thing, and I like this one too, right? The Sportsnet Stats puts out just a harmless graphic, right? Just promoting what the Leafs have done, just as they promote what the Oilers and Flames and everybody else has done throughout the season. Tim and Friends, you got, right? Great source of 
NHL news here in Canada comes in here and just has to leaf homer it so hard. And this is what I find frustrating here is Toronto media and of course a flagship show in Canada on sports television has to come in and homer it for the Leafs. Oh my good, they're so good. Is there a better deal in the NHL right now? And despite the Oilers not being on a 14-game point streak, which you can say, oh, well, the standings are all that matter, clearly that is not the intent of this tweet from Tim and Fre Friends. This is a tweet simply aimed at just generating some kind of conversation. And, of course, it sparks because of the way things are going. And I think there was a little intent knowing that, obviously, Tim and Friends is not a Leafs sole ship. It's kind of everything NHL in Canada. So... Clearly knowing that, and you know, somebody on the social media team had to know that Leon Connor and, of course, Ryan Nugent Hopkins and Zach Hyman are doing much better, 31 more points over the course of the span than the other quint or quartet there for the Leafs. They had to know that was the case. So you go put something argumentative out into the universe as that big of a platform as Tim and Friends the social media account, the Twitter account, and suddenly the internet is ablaze. Oilers fans versus Leafs fans. Trust me, I've gotten into it a little bit on Twitter too myself, throwing up a tweet about it. But that's just the exciting part about it. And then, you know what, the fact of the matter is the Oilers social media person gets so wrapped up in it, they go out there and put this out. And look at this, look at this. Here's just... If you know anything about the internet, I did work in social media for a brief six-month stint of my career in broadcasting. Look at this. This Tim and Friends tweet has 17 retweets, 21 quote tweets, 208 likes. Very little engagement for as big of a platform as Tim and Friends has in Canada. And then the Oilers come in and absolutely annihilate it. It's called a ratio, more or less. And, um, well, you know what? Here's the problem. Uh, 233 retweets, 154 quote tweets, which is a lot of very angry Leafs fans if you want to go do that. And this is just, if you have Twitter, go check this out if you haven't seen this today, because this is absolutely hilarious what this devolved into, and it's kind of fantastic to really go out there and see that that Oilers-Leafs anger towards each other is still there as fan bases, and that's what's going to make this year fun, is if, you know what, both teams live up to expectations See you in the cup final, Toronto friends. Let's do it and decide who's best for the Stanley seven games or less. That's kind of kind of exactly where this wants to lead to if it uh, goes anybody's way within the Oilers and Leafs land is let's just duke it out in the Stanley Cup final and decide once and for all, right? But as it currently stands, we're going to have little fun arguments between ourselves like this. And there's some Oilers fans that don't agree with this. There's some Leafs fans that don't agree with what was said by Tim and friends. But it's all fair and fun. And that's what I was just trying to spotlight a little bit today. The lighter side of Oilers fandom where, you know what, we're not worrying about Yes Puliarvi. We're not yelling about trades. We're not doing this. Oilers versus Leafs fans live and well again this season. Friends, I'm Tyson, this is Stolen TV. Thank you so much for tuning in this evening. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow as we get set for a new week of Edmonton Oilers hockey here on the channel. I am up on out of here.